Good morning, good morning, good morning again, good morning again. Today is Wednesday, November the 12th, 2014. My name is Pastor Al, and this is another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. Vashon Mitchell is right on it this morning. Things are turning around for us. It may not look like they have come, like we are where we need to be, but please know that because of the fact that God has raised you this morning, because of the fact that God has sustained your life because of the fact that you have another opportunity to be the person God has called you to be, things are turning around. It doesn't matter how bad they look. It doesn't matter how much of an obstacle um, that we are up against. It doesn't matter how big the hill or the mountain we have to climb. Things are turning around. It's about faith. It's about believing. And it's about trusting God that as he is doing what he's doing, truly, we will see the turnaround. And not only see the turn around what we will become emboldened, encouraged, and enlivened in God. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Inspirational Wednesdays. It's our hope. It's our wish. It's our desire that by the end of this call this morning, we will have prayed about, talked about, dealt with something that you're dealing with and that God would have given you a rich, bold answer that enables you to be a rich, bold disciple and steward for him in this world. What we're going to do, we're going to have our opening morning prayer, then we're going to have our short devotional, and then we're going to get into the best part of this call, which is the prayer section of the call, where we get to hear from you, we get to receive your prayer requests, your praise reports, and your prayers. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small. If there's something on your mind, on your heart, on your spirit, we want you to share it with us so that we may be able to pray with you, and in and in the course, uh, petition God to move in a mighty way in your lives. All right, let us begin with our opening word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we thank you, God, for being here today. We thank you, God, for the chance to come before your throne. We thank you, God, for the chance to be at this virtual altar and to lay our concerns, lay our worries, lay our doubts, lay our problems, lay our issues, lay our predicaments, lay our tribulations, lay our circumstances, lay our lay whatever it is that is on our hearts, minds, and souls right here and to walk away knowing by faith that if we leave it here with you, if we give it to you, that you will be certain to make it happen. You will be certain to do the very things that we can't. You will be certain to perform a miracle in our lives so that God, when we share what you've done, someone else decides that it's better to give themselves to you. It's better to trust you than to go it alone, to do it your, their own ways. So God, use us now. Give us the word, start uh, sensitizing our hearts, start sensitizing our minds so that God, when it comes time to raise our prayer concerns, we have the words, we are the phrases, we have the thoughts necessary to articulate what it is is on our minds so that God, you may in turn be able to receive it and bless us as you do what you need to do. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. The scriptorial focus of our devotional this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, the 11th through 13th verses. That's John chapter 10, verses 11 through 13. I will read from the New International Version of the scripture. The word of God is as follows. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Thus far, the word of God. The title for this morning's devotional is Real Leaders Sacrifice. Real Leaders Sacrifice. The current issue before us is leadership. Our Heavenly Father is on a mission to develop the leadership potential that every Christian possesses. Our call isn't just to be disciples. There is more for us to do than just to just be students. At some point, every student must graduate and become teachers. What our God wants to see when we step into the particular leadership roles that he's prepared for us is that we lead with excellence. 
to that end, the Lord God Almighty impressed upon us last week that real leaders lead. We don't sit back waiting for anyone else to perform the job that our Heavenly Father has assigned to us. Instead, we take the initiative to be the change we most want to see, as well as facilitating this change in others around us. This isn't easy to do, but the truth is that nothing worth doing is ever easy. The cost of hard work is always present whenever the intention is to accomplish anything substantial. The bottom line is that we must lead. In order to do so, we have to actually do it. We have to lead. This week, our Lord takes this initial point about leadership a step forward. Not only do real leaders actually lead, but real leaders sacrifice. Leaders who are worth their weight in gold, platinum, and diamonds are those persons intimately familiar with sacrifice. They're well acquainted with the reality that being an effective leader requires them at different times to forgo something in their lives. Shoot, let's all be for real for a second. Our salvation cost God everything he had. Our Heavenly Father had to sacrifice His only Son to make His will reality. Even though Jesus was dead for only three days, He was dead nevertheless. For 72 hours, He was separated from the Father. I bet for God, those three days felt like an eternity. It's important that we take notice that even the Creator of all existence couldn't escape the cost of sacrifice. His divinity wasn't exempt from paying the price of losing something valuable for our spiritual well-being. Therefore, we must come to grips with the inescapable truth that leadership is intertwined with sacrifice. To have the former necessitates that we experience the latter. Before we get too deep into our topic this morning, we must understand that the primary focus of sacrifice is on everyone else. Yes, we're the ones giving ourselves away, but the goal of sacrificing isn't to put the spotlight on us. Instead, it's aimed squarely on, the, on other persons and what they gain from the sacrifices we make. This one fact right here disqualifies many persons from leadership. Too many persons hold themselves out as leaders today uh, and that are focused on what their leadership brings them. They lead, quote-unquote lead, for the fame and notoriety it provides. They lead for the clout it bestows upon them. They lead for the money it gives them. They lead for every reason but the one that changes and impacts the lives of other persons for the better. Jesus calls these persons, these leaders, hired hands. They have no concern for the sheep entrusted to them. Rather, their primary focus is on the daily wages they earn from this quote-unquote job. Because their concern is only skin deep, they, don't, they won't sacrifice for the sheep. They won't give their all for the sheep's well-being. Therefore, real leaders are those persons that sacrifice. As these persons lead, they put it all on the table. They don't just bark orders from high purchase for purchase for others to follow. Instead, they roll up their sleeves and they get busy working with their followers as they work on them. They jump right down there into the muck and mire to pull their followers out of the mess and back onto solid ground. So what if these leaders get dirty and smelly in the process? It's part and parcel of the call to lead. No real shepherd comes in from spending a day tending sheep without, without also smelling like those sheep. You see, real leaders are required to develop followers into a new generation of leaders who positively affect the lives of their followers. In, a, in order to do this, in order to train future leaders and to pass the banner of leadership to them, leaders today have to pour into the lives of the followers their training to be future leaders. The act of pouring out involves a transfer of a thing from one full vessel or container into a second empty vessel or container. Once the first vessel pours what it contains into the second vessel, the first container has forever lost what it gave away. 
It can always be refilled with a new substance or thing, but this new substance or thing doesn't negate or diminish the original substance or thing already poured out. When leaders actually pour into the lives of their followers, they're filling these persons with love, knowledge, and a whole host of other things that they didn't have prior to the experience. Hopefully, these followers are filled with what they need in order to, one, fully function in their lives as followers, and two, to begin the process of transitioning from mere followers to life-changing leaders. This is or should be the aim of every real leader. The problem that confronts many leaders is that no one ever gives much attention to the leaders after they have poured out into others. No one realizes that these leaders are now empty. They gave, all, they gave away all they then possess and are now left with the emptiness inside of them. It's a void that's unmistakable. It usually requires someone in an equal or higher position as these leaders to intercede and to refill us with new substance. For the Christian, this quote-unquote person in a higher position is none other than the Lord God himself. But the point made here is that the sacrifice required from real leadership typically occurs when there is a sincere, substantial outpouring into the lives of those persons around us. Jesus declares that hired hands quickly abandon the sheep when the wolf attacks the flock. This occurs because these hired hands don't care for or about the sheep. They don't love the sheep they're required to watch over. This lack of love distinguishes hired hands from the shepherd. Said another way, real leaders sacrifice because they truly love their followers. It's exactly because of their love for those in their charge that these leaders are willing to go great distances for their followers. Who will do anything for someone else if he or she isn't motivated to help this person? We definitely aren't willing to sacrifice anything of value for persons we feel no connection to or love for. Being the leaders that God requires us to be mandates that we love. Every one of us has read and or heard 1 Corinthians chapter 13 read aloud. This is the love chapter, and we typically encounter it at weddings. But the truth is, excuse me, that God didn't create this chapter just for weddings. No, he created it as a guiding principle or standard for us Christians as we lead other people to him. It's love that claims a lost soul. It's love that reclaims the black backslider. It's love that reaches out to help others. It's love that stands a witness for a transformed life. And it's love that sacrifices. You see, sacrifice isn't the act of abandoning or losing ourselves for other persons. Rather, it's love in action. It's love acting intentionally. Let me get myself into trouble as we bring this devotional to a close. Many of us are currently mad with God because we believe that he hasn't fulfilled his promise to elevate us. He's told us that as his Christian disciples and stewards, he's going to promote us to higher levels of leadership. However, it seems like he's overlooking us. Instead of forsaking us, could it be that we haven't been promoted or elevated to the next level of leadership yet because we haven't yet learned how to love the people on this level? That's just something for us to ponder as we reflect on the truth that real leaders sacrifice. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we need you right now to help us deal with the concept of sacrifice. The truth is that it's an uncomfortable topic. It's uncomfortable because it typically requires us to give more than we're willing or ready to give. We can get with giving some of us away, but we have real issues with giving all of us away. This is especially true when the very persons we're required to sacrifice for may not respond positively to such sacrifice. These recipients may not apply what we sacrifice meaningfully and effectively in their lives. We must realize that the spotlight isn't on how the sacrifice is received, rather it's on us and our willingness to be obedient. Only you 
can help us with this issue. And we call upon you now to grow and mature us so that we will understand that our sacrifices will bring us closer to you. They make us more like you, and that's our objective at the end of the day. Do it in us and for us now so that you are glorified through our lives. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We have just had our morning devotional. It's our hope. It's our prayer. It's our desire that as we were going through the devotional, God was speaking to you. Yes, in the context of our devotional, we were speaking explicitly about Christian disciples and stewards, but the principle here really applies to every aspect of our lives. If you are a supervisor, a manager, a boss on the job, the same principle applies. You have to sacrifice in some way so that your teammates, so that your uh, underlings, so that your employees are able to succeed at the task that has been assigned to them by, the, by, by everyone's employer. If you are a community leader, you also have to sacrifice in order to get the community you've been called to lead or been elected to lead to follow you wherever it is that you are trying to take them. Here's another, let me let me speak to all of us on a more personal level. If you are a parent, you already know the requirement to sacrifice. In fact, you've been doing it since these little boogaboos were born. But realize that that innate requirement to sacrifice is this exactly because you are the leader in your children's life. And as a great leader, you have been making great sacrifices for their well-being, for their happiness, for their protection, for their nourishment, for their growth and development. And what God wants us to see is that if you can make sacrifices in your personal life as a leader, then you can make sacrifices in your Christian life, your spiritual life, or your professional life, or in your communal life, or in your uh, civic life as a leader. And if you are that person that we talked about at the end of the devotion, at the end of the devotional, that's worried about why God hasn't elevated you to the next level. And maybe it's not He's elevated you to the next level spiritually, but He hasn't elevated you to the next level professionally. This may be the issue. Because if you spend all your time complaining about the people under your charge, then how are you loving them? It sounds like you're griping and hating them. How are you loving them if you spend all your time complaining? God may be trying to get you to realize if you spend a little more time loving them, then guess what? He'll open up the doors for your elevation, for your promotion, for your increase. That's just a thought. We're going to leave it alone. We're going to transition right now into our prayer section of our call. We are going to get busy praying and interceding on one another's behalf. I believe that someone this morning has a prayer that not only affects them, but it affects all of us because whatever it is that you're praying about or you want us to pray for you about, it affects us all. It's something that we all deal with and that and that what we need is, is, is for God to do what only he can do to, to perform the impossible in our lives so that not only can we move forward, forward, but our faith is sustained. You know, many times when we're going through a problem, when we're going through a situation, when we're going through a tribulation, the, the biggest hurdle, the biggest challenge is to our faith because it's something about that situation, something about that predicament, something about that tribulation that essentially challenges whether or not God, we believe that God would actually do what it is he needs to do. So we are sitting here praying today. We are coming together interceding, hoping that if God does nothing else, that he will sustain our faith, that he would uh, shore up our faith, that he would strengthen our faith so that as we push forward through whatever it is we're going through, as we deal with whatever we going, going, whatever it is we're going through, we will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this will not kill us, that this will not hurt us, that this will not stop us, that this will not hold us about, that this is just a stepping stone to get us where we need to go. Amen, amen. Again, uh, for those who are calling us for the first time, we want you to know that there's no topic 
offhand, off limits, if it's on your heart and mind, if it's bothering you, we want you to raise it uh, and, and so that we may pray about it. Here's a hint about something that you probably need to pray, pray about. If it's something that is constantly nagging you, if it's something that's eating away at you, if it's that one thing that you can go to sleep and wake up and it's still there in the morning, that's probably something that you need to pray about. And we are uh, uh, inviting you to share it with us. Please know that you're in a safe space. You're in a space with other like-minded believers, other prayer warriors, and that the word says where two or more are gathered, there shall God also be. So guess what? I'm here. You're here. There's at least the two. That means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit is here. That means there's at least five of us here right now, and God really wants to know what it is that is troubling you, what it is that is on your mind, so that you, so that he may do what he needs to do for you. Now, someone may say, well, if he's God, doesn't he know already? Isn't he omniscient? Yes, he is all-knowing. But the word says that we have not because we ask not. We do we we find not because we seek not. The door is never open because we never not. There's a requirement upon us to take the first step. And the funny thing, that's the only step that God really requires us to do, to take the first step because he has promised to do everything else. So with that said, we want you to give us your name, where you're calling from, and what it is that you want us to pray for you. If you're worried that someone may recognize you by your name just give us where you're calling from and share what it is what your prayer request is and we will go from there